So for this next short, I want to show you how we can take a spline and apply geometry to it, as opposed to what we did before, where we converted a spline to geometry. Now, the previous exercise works pretty well for simple and quick applications of geometry, so you just kind of get in there very fast. But this other way, while it can be quick, it gives us just a little bit more to play with, and I want to show you what I mean. So to start, I'm going to start off with the top uh, perspective because what I want to do is I want to take a swirl I want to make it like a spiral and pull it up so it could look like maybe like a swirl or a dollop of whipped cream or something like that um, the uh, the application still applies in my use case but maybe you'll find a better way to use your curve now I'm going to go ahead and get started here I have found that if I take the uh, EP curve tool like this and I go around what would be a square you'd think that the average would result in something similar to a circle. I don't love how that looks, so I like to give it just a little bit more um, points to, to give that curve I really like. So if I start two up and I want to result over here at two um, in the negative x, I will actually average out the difference myself because I want it to go there. I'm going to do the same thing here, just a little boop, and then here, and then right in the middle here. Here and this is this is resulting in something a little bit more like a like a circle for me, but I, I don't want to make a perfect circle because I'm going to try to swirl it in. So this is where I start to get just a little bit more. I don't know temperamental with it. Do you have to do what I'm doing? No, in fact, I kind of don't even really like where I'm going with this. I'm going to have to make some adjustments, but it's it's okay. Like this doesn't have to be perfect because my favorite part is that we can actually come in here and move some of these verts around to make it a little bit more what you want or what I want in this case. <clears throat> so now that I've got my curve about where I'd like it, um, I'm going to go ahead and create the geometry that I wanted to trace. Now it, this might be a little confusing, um, but let's just worry about um, only the faces that we want to actually extrude along the spline. So I've removed everything except for this flat piece, um, and I'm going to go ahead and move them over to the base of the swirl. So I'll go ahead and move the move tool over. Uh, Hotkey X will let you snap to the grid, and it's helpful that I started on the a grid point, so that, that helps me. Um, and I can also uh, rotate this puppy, and I want to face the geometry of the normals of the geometry towards the pathing that I wanted to go as if I were to extrude it that direction that's that's the direction I want it otherwise it'll be inverted that's not good so um, to rotate this and to also like snap it in the direction I want I would like a, a 90 degree uh, turn here I'm gonna hold down J and rotate it and it snaps for me a little bit got it right to the grid and now well I have one selected you can tell that I've got it selected because it's green I'm going to hold down shift and select my swirl now or my spline or curve and then I'm going to go ahead and use extrude. Now that did not work. Why didn't you work? <clears throat> Let's try that again. Extrude. Let me rotate this. Oh, I think I need to select the faces and extrude. I do, don't I? Okay, so what I did there, and this can get a little confusing, if you select the object mode of it, it doesn't really know how you want it to extrude. There are many ways to go about it. So you want to make sure that you've got the face selection um, also, uh, and then apply the second selection before you do the extrusion. I'm going to do that, and that's nice. It looks all messed up, but don't worry, we're not in trouble yet. If I just actually start here in, this, in the divisions and I just apply, you can start to see it take its form. No, granted, that's a nice start. Doesn't look ideal. Um, I want to show you how you can now get in here and do a little bit of editing before you commit and actually get to back to your sculpting. So um, I'll head over to the extrude. If, to make sure, if you go to the channel box and you make sure you've got your extrusion selected here, you can actually do a little bit of, of short edits here in the channel box, but the attribute editor is kind of where it's at. So what I can do now is I can, I can play around with the taper and I can really add more divisions besides 25. It caps out at 25, but if I go in here and manually type it in, let's say I do 100, I get a lot more of that selection. I think I can do 
Yeah, I like that a little bit more. Um, my next favorite thing to play with is the taper. Um, I like to, oh, that's twist. Twist is actually kind of fun if you really want it to feel like a swirl. You can play around with that. You do have to deal with the UVs later, though, if, if you need to unwrap it. But the taper is kind of nice because I can get some more interesting kind of shape and swirl out of this. I don't need it quite that big. But that's actually getting kind of interesting. So that gives me a decent enough place to start um, while I continue to work on my swirl. All right. So I hope that helps. That's how you apply uh, geometry to a spline. <laughs>